Today we have another build from the ever-growing KVD fan store from China. However, this particular keyboard kit is kind of a neglected and forgotten piece. And this is the KBD661 mechanical keyboard kit. The main reason why this hasn't been the most well received is because of its polarizing design which we'll look at later. And also KBD fans do sell the KBD66 and the Tadar68 which are more traditional looking 65% keyboards. I don't have a clue how this was packaged so it was probably better packed but these are all the parts that we have and the kit comes with a case, plate, PCB and stabilizers so you have to buy key switches and keycaps to finish it off. Alright so we start with a PCB which is very clean, it is a 65% PCB and comes with the diodes and resistors installed. It does support a bunch of layouts, as we can see with the KBD66 layout diagram. However, it's not all good news as the mounting plate limits our customizability. So as we can see, we have spots for step caps lock, split right shift, and array of bottom row positions for the modifiers and space bars, split right shift, and split backspace. But if we look at the KBD661 layout diagram, we lose a lot of that purely because the plate does not have the cutouts for it, so that's a bit unfortunate. The plate itself is made from 1.5mm thick aluminium, which has this brush finish, and it's quite clean and looks great. First up as always, we put in the stabilizers. The stabilizers these come with are cherry style. Interestingly, this comes with three spacebar stabilizers, 6unit, 6.25u, and 7u even though the plate only supports 6.25 units, which is a standard length for a spacebar. Unfortunately, these are not genuine, and they're pretty bad. These feel very similar to the ones that came with my KBD75, and they just feel very scratchy and are very rattly, which is just disappointing more than anything. I didn't have any spare proper stabs at the time, so this is when we turn to drowning it in lube. The switches we've gone with are the Kale Box Jades. The Kale Box switches have really given us a fresh wave of switches, especially these clickies. Due to their click bar design, they have a very sharp and distinct click sound to them. Normally a clicky switch, such as the Cherry MX Blues, will have a click jacket which creates that sound and often this results in a slightly rattly switch. With this, it's just that metal click bar that creates that click, meaning that we also get two clicks per keystroke instead of one. Jades are basically a heavier version of the Kale Box Whites that perhaps is more well known, although they have the same spring, but this just has a thicker bar which increases the tactility and makes for a lower pitched but louder click than the Whites. These are plate mount key switches, so we don't have the two little prongs that go into the PCB. So when you're soldering, make sure that you press the plate and PCB together to make sure that the switches are flush to the PCB. Because of its closed top design, if you are installing LEDs, you have to put them in first. I'm using 1.8mm LEDs, but you can also use the 2x3x4 rectangular LEDs. Because of the click bar mechanism, you cannot use the normal 3mm circular LEDs as they will interfere with the click bar. So what I like to do is put in the LED, making sure the longer pin lines up with a positive symbol on the PCB. Then put the key switch in. Then I like to solder one pin of the LED and then reflow it so we can pull it all the way down and then solder in the other pin. If you don't pull it all the way down, you risk having the LED hit the click bar, making it unusable. This is also the time you decide on whether you want the split shifts and backspace and all that, but for this build, the layout will be determined by the keycap compatibility. I think the main concern is the right shift key, as there is a 2.25 unit gap, which is the same as the left shift meaning that our normal 2.75 unit right shift will not fit. 
So we have to split it and put a 1.25U key and a 1U key. Unfortunately, these are not the correct profile as we are putting row 3 keys with R4 keys. So with the soldering all done, we can put it together. First of all, it's always good to put on the rubber feet before you do anything so you don't scratch the bottom. One little weird thing is that the rubber feet it came with are too big for the indents on the bottom of the case. Since they're self-adhesive, it's fine, but it's still not great. But here's the case and it's an interesting design in regards to how it's put together. So it has the two main pieces. The top piece is much like a plastic top shell on the typical OEM mechanical keyboard. It goes over the bottom piece and covers the side and this is made from aluminium and of course has no flex to it in the hands but is still quite light. The inside edges aren't finished like that on the outside but not that it really matters. The bottom piece has most of the weight and as we can see there are no standoffs on the bottom surface which most keyboards have and all tray mount boards have. Instead we have six holes around the edge. So to put it together we first put the plate in which has four holes in the corners and the bottom piece has these little protrusions that go through those holes. It's not tight or anything so it can move around quite a bit and then the top piece slips over the whole thing and you screw it on the bottom. So it's kind of like a sandwich case design as the plate isn't actually screwed to anything like a top mount design, but the plate isn't visible from the outside. So for this to work, the tolerances and machining have to be quite tight and well done, otherwise this is what happens. And there's a load of movement with the plate both laterally and also up and down. There just isn't any clamping pressure between the bottom and top aluminium pieces and this makes the keyboard quite unusable in my opinion. You feel the movement when you're typing in all directions and it just rattles like crazy. So I asked KBD fans about this and they said to put some tape on the edge of the plate, essentially making the edge of the plate thicker to close that gap. So I went ahead and gave it a go. With my first attempt, I basically wrapped electrical tape around the edge, making sure I didn't block the holes. And as we can see, I couldn't put the top piece back on as it was too tight. It wasn't the thickness of the plate that was the problem, just that it made the plate bigger. With the second attempt, I just put one layer of tape, and then I realized that I really should be putting this on the underside of the plate so it will be hidden away. And with just one layer of electrical tape, it did fix the problem, although I think I could have put one more layer. And then I also did put some foam on the bottom of the PCB to also provide a bit of pressure, but mainly to fill that void and make the keyboard feel better and more solid when typing. And well, it works, but you shouldn't have to do this, although others have said that theirs had perfect fit and had no issues. And to finish it off we have the keycaps. 
On the KBD661 product page, they show the keyboard with SA profile keycaps, and I thought it looked pretty cool. However, with SA keycaps, there's not a whole lot that is readily available, especially for sculpted caps. Fortunately, KBD fans did have a sculpted set in stock, Max Keys SA Berserk. We got the base set, and it comes with all these keycaps here, in a nice box as well, which I appreciate. These are about 1.4mm thick and are double shot, which means the legends are another piece of plastic, and that also adds thickness to the top half of the keycap. They are made from ABS plastic and have a smooth satin finish to them. As we saw before, the normal right shift key won't work as it's a 2.25 unit gap, which is the same as the left shift key. We do get a couple of novelty keys that can fill up that gap, however they aren't the correct profile, but honestly looking at it, it isn't so obvious. And here it is all done, and it definitely is a unique look. Known as the keycap keyboard, or the shift key keyboard, based on it basically looking like a cherry shift keycap, it is a polarizing one. However, it does make it different, which I like. It has a quite tall design, which is further accentuated by its flat ascending sides. Normally there would be some sort of taper or chamfer, but the flat edges at an angle give it a kind of monolithic appearance, which really gives it real presence. And looking at the side, it does have a natural inclination to it of 6 degrees, and again just looks like a strong solid block. However, when you look at the top of the keyboard from a normal person's perspective, it has tiny bezels at about 2.5mm thick, which is quite contrasting to the fullness of the sides of the case. Although from the top down view, you see those sides sloping away. I got this in silver, however it is also available in grey, black, cyan and purple. The finish on it is clean and smooth and I had no defects and has held up fine so far. Although with the bottom, the colour choices are quite odd. I have this in cyan, which comes with the black and grey versions as well, although for the cyan top version it comes with a silver bottom, and the purple top version comes with a grey bottom, and you can't customise this, so that is a bit unfortunate, although it doesn't bother me personally since it's completely out of view, and it's pretty difficult to pick up the keyboard anyway. I went with silver because of its ability to pair up with keycaps fairly easily, and I think this Max Keys Berserk SA key set fits it quite nicely. This is sculpted in SA12343, giving it its nice curved shape, and they're quite tall which I found appealing in pictures. The curve and tallness of the keycaps in my eyes accompany the straight angled enclosure, somehow giving it the shape it needs. And the colours are quite bright, being based on this guy here. And I think the white and yellow helps bridge the gap between the deep red of the alphas and the silver of the enclosure. There are a couple more novelty keys, but with this split right shift situation, I didn't want to go overboard. And it's very comfortable to type on. The 6 degree angle definitely helps in this situation, but what makes the typing experience is the Kale Box J key switches.
The click on these are so crisp and pronounced and is furthered by its double click and that translates to the tactile feedback as well. It's quite strong and again sharp, especially in comparison to say Cherry MX Blues. After using these and going back to a Cherry MX Blue board, the blues just feel mushy, sluggish and rattly. Not to offend all you MX Blue users, but that's exactly how it feels. And of course, this thing is an absolute machine gun. This keyboard uses QMK, which is a powerful firmware to customize your keyboard. There's no links on the product page, but you just go to qmkeyboard.cn. And on the list, there isn't the KBD-661 specifically, but it's just the KBD-660, as this PCB is used in other boards. And here we have our default keymap. If you want to learn more about QMK and flashing your keyboard, then definitely do your research. Overall, it was a really fun build. I haven't seen too many pictures of this keyboard, so it's nice to actually build one that is slightly different to the norm. And I must say, I do quite like the shape. It's bold, strong, and holds a real presence on your desk. And I think it combines really well with the bright and tall SA Berserk keycaps. The assembly was also interesting with its kind of closed sandwich design. This makes it a very solid feeling keyboard, much like a top mount board would be. However, the tolerances and fit with my particular case was pretty poor and did require electrical tape to make it right. And that solidity really transfers well to the absolute clickiness of the Kalebox Jade key switches and these are just so much fun to type on. This will be making its way to my friend Shin in the US, so I hope you enjoy it because I truly did enjoy the opportunity to build this lovely keyboard.